How's that, Carl? Yes, Tinker. That'll do very nicely. Thank you. What do you think, Mrs. Bardell? Why, ask me. I'm just the general dog's body round here. Just one more item, me to rub over. Just me to one to... more item, Mrs. B. Don't you know what this is? It's the portrait of a lady. A Venetian lady. Oh, a lady, is it? A Venus lady, did you say? One of them foreign asses, I got no doubt. Still, she got more clothes on than some other tell. What you can see if it looks as if you could do with a good scrub with soap and water. Not to say a few drops of carbolic. Carbolic? An old master like chin Tinker, Tinker, you're over-enthusiastic. It's only a copy. Only a copy? Of 500 guineas, I'd rate it as gold dust. The original, stolen last year at the Palazzo Medici, was worth, at a modest estimate, 50,000 guineas. 50,000 guineas for a job of paint? Curious. Some people don't know what to do with their money. Some people don't. I'm afraid Mrs. B doesn't approve. Is uh, that why you bought it, Governor? Hmm? Well, you know, I remember how cut up you were when you read about the robbery. To tell you the truth, I half expected to find ourselves on the next boat train out to see what we could do about it. Yes, and we might well have done just that, but we were otherwise occupied, if you remember. Yeah, on that diamond smuggling case. Yeah, that was a good one. But what about the picture, the original one? Was it ever found? Uh, no, not yet. Proper mystery, eh? Yes, as you say, a proper mystery. And there's another in the agony column of the Times. If the person who purchased a copy of the portrait of a lady from the Fitzroy Gallery will contact Margrave 3174, he will hear something to his advantage. Yeah, but that's us. W well, you, anyway. What do you think it means, then? Well, there's only one way to find out, isn't there? Oh, hello, operator. Margrave 3174, please. Ring in. Oh, hello, Margrave 3174. Hang on a minute, Sexton Blake here for you. I... Sexton Blake? Not the Sexton Blake. <laughs> no, please, it's a foolish question. There can only be one. Well, Mr. Blake, what can I do for you? Oh, you are the gentleman who bought the picture. Uh, no, I can't discuss it just now on the telephone, but if I might come to see you. Uh, immediately, if I may. Uh, your, your address? So, goodbye. Betty, look after the shop. I have to go out. to see me, Mr. Blake. Mr. Walt. Mr. Walt. Helmut Walt, yes. Ah, nice, nice. How much did you want for it? I don't remember saying that it was for sale. Please, permit me. Oh, what's the big idea? Yeah, I like very much, very much. Hmm. What sort of price had you in mind, Mr. Walt? One thousand pounds, cash. I will say on the button. One thousand pounds. Guinea? Oh, very well. Fifteen hundred. I'm not going to haggle. When I see a thing I like, I buy it. That is Helmut Watts. And when I buy a thing I like, it's usually for keeps. That is Sexton Blake. You mean you don't wish to sell? Not even if I raise the price. Uh, Two thousand? Three thousand? Oh, come now. <laughs> it's only a copy. Exactly. And as a copy, it's hardly worth that sort of money, is it? Unless, of course, it happens to have been executed by Domenico, the son of Cintaro. Uh, Mr. Blake, I see you know your painting. So, you will also know there is only one copy by Domenico, and that is in the possession of the Duke of Fontaine. Of that I am well aware. Thanks. This is uh, just uh, an ordinary copy, uh, but uh, very good, just the same. So, 5,000 pounds and another copy which I have in my possession to replace this one. It's not a very good one, naturally, but it's uh, quite good. Very good business for you, huh? 1,000% profit in 24 hours. Since you are aware of the price I paid for it, I would be very interested to know, Mr. Voss, why you are being so generous. <laughs> I will be frank with you, Mr. Blake. 
I own the Fitzroy Galleries. I am not there when you buy the picture, and my assistant, Basil, he's the nincompoops. And you are endeavoring to say what? That he should not have sold it to you? Just so. It is sold already to an American gentleman. He wants to collect it tomorrow. Could you not give this American gentleman this uh, other copy that you mentioned? Uh, no, you see, he has seen both. Ah. And he chose this one. Well, to give him the other now is not ethical. You, you are seeing my dilemma. Yes, indeed. I am also seeing, unfortunately, a bill of sale which makes this picture my legal property. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is why I make such a, a generous offer. <laughs> of course, I'm losing all my profit, but, well, that's how it is. You know, one must pay for one's mistakes. <laughs> now, you, I see, are a gentleman. It is a deal, huh? I will think about it. Oh, but, but I must have my answer today. Uh, you see, the, the American, uh, he's living for New York. And if he goes uh, without the picture, uh, we are both the losers. We don't find easily somebody so ready to pay such money. I said, Mr. Valls, that I will think about it. Yeah. Ah, there, there. Before six o'clock? Please, Mr. Blake. Hmm? Crazy one and no mistake. Hmm. Do you reckon it's a fiddle then? I would rather like to know a little more about Mr. Helmut Vals. And I think I know the man to help me. Matt Carnegie. The artist bloke. Lives on the river. Get out the grey panther, will you, Tinker? Right. I'll pay him a visit. Good eye up there. Come down, cover. And uh, bring the milk while you're about it, will you? Great supper and kangaroos. Well, are you got? Oh, sorry about that. I thought it was Charlie. Charlie? Uh, the garbage man. He fancies you an eye for painting. Uh, ah, meet my model. Maggie? Saxon Blake. How do you do? Uh, put the kettle on there, it's a good Sheila. You'll stay for Bruin? Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> I'll give the young lady a hand, if I might. I'm sure you will, young Tinker. What do you think? <laughs> uh, would it be rude to ask what, what it, it is? What it is? Anyone else but you would have got a... It's called siesta in Madrid. Uh, you don't find it... Uh, Restful? Uh, oh, no, 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 I understand. But that rose ain't half bad. What can I do for you? Information, please, Matt. If I can help, shoot. Helmut Voss. He owns the... Fitzroy Gallery. And a right rat bag he is, too. It's not exactly the words I would have chosen, but um, I arrived at the same impression. Let's hear the gut. Look, it was not my fault. It was that fool, Basil. Oh, please. We are dealing with Sexton Blake, not just with anyone. No, he suspects nothing. It was just a mistake. I have given him until six o'clock. After that, I will do as you suggest. Goodbye. Give me Waterloo 2294. Hello, Jimmy. This is Vance. I might have a little job for you this evening. In Baker Street, the home of Sexton Blake.
I'll just give the young lady a hand. With the washing up. Quite full of handy, man, ain't he? I bet your Mrs. Watchit would have a thing or two to say if she knew. Bardell, I shudder to think. Great heavens, what's the time? We've outstayed our welcome. Your modest brew up turned out to be quite a spread, didn't it? Glad to have you. <laughs> Though it's not the kind of tucker you're used to, I rather fancy my hand at cooking. No, you did us proud. <sighs> time very much. I reckon it knocks on the head that rumor the only thing Australians can cook is roasted wallaby. Uh, about this helmet waltz business. I'd like to see this picture of yours sometime. If he's offering that kind of gravy just to get it back, it must be something. I'd value your opinion. I know I'm no great shapes of the painter myself, but... but as a restorer, you're a positive genius, as I have good reason to remember. You're thinking of that Van Dyke business. The Mel Shut Art Swindle. That's where we first met, wasn't it? Yes, five years ago, next month. Five years, is it? Ha! Huh. Time pedals on a bicycle. You think this helmet waltz crack is on the same line? Too early to tell yet. When do you think you'll be able to come round? Any time, man. Now, if it's all the same with you. When Maggie's finished the washing up, I'd have to see her home anyway. Maybe we can do that in your car and then puddle on your place. Splendid. I can return some of your hospitality. A nightcap, perhaps. <laughs> Beauty. <laughs> Any luck? Tinker and, and Pedro are after whoever it was. Oh, I can tell you, sir, it was horrible. Turn my heart right over, it was so horrible. A great big black man, ten foot tall with a knife in his hand, glaring down at me from the fireplace yes. he was. He'd have cut me through for yes. not for... All right, Mrs. Bedell, not to worry. Off to bed, mm. off to bed. Yes, sir, if you say so, yes. sir, but I'll never go back to sleep. Not a wink, yes. nor will Miss Mr. Hack when I'll tell her. Quite safe. Say, give me the collie wobble with Good all night. the things that goes on Good in this night. house. Good night, Bedell. The old turkey had a fright, all right. I guess anyone up there would seem ten feet tall. And there's not much doubt what he was using a knife on. No amateur job either. He knew what he was doing. A professional cracksman. Just who, I wonder? Someone put up by Helmut Walsh, you think? What makes you say that? Uh, I have to examine this painting more closely. Back at the barge, that is. Maybe I can repair that damage while I'm about uh, it. I'd be grateful. I'll leave that in your cable hand. Uh, uh, Tinker, have any luck? No, not yet. He won't give up in a hurry. So Helmut Waltz is a dealer who buys in Europe and sells mainly in the States. But not the kind of deal he'd meet in Sotheby's. He goes for copies rather than originals. Uh, usually good ones, and he deals with the wealthy rather than the best people. I'm not sure I find that particularly flattering. You know what I mean. Matt, would you say that the Duke of Fontal comes into that category? He's reckoned to have the best collection of phony old masters in the country. Which only came to light when his father died and death duties were being assessed. A number of canvases in the castle thought to be original turned out to be only copies. The old man must have been plain crook or else as gullible as they came. Still, there are one or two good things. 
A Veronese and uh, a Bonifacio. You may make a copy of that one, which should be worth a pretty penny. Even more so, since the original was stolen. I wouldn't mind betting this business was tied up with that robbery. Yes, exactly. Sorry, Gav. He was just too quick off the mark for me. Oh, well, that's the luck of the game, isn't it? We can't win every time. There are a few crooks who would agree with you on that. The day Sexton Blake throws his hand in, the swagman will hold a pretty jamboree. It's the final game that can't snap the final game. Yeah, well, there's something in that. Uh, all right, better be on my way. I'll take good care of this. Is the car still out? Oh, uh, yes, Governor. I thought Mr. Carnegie might want to lift back. Under the circumstances, I wouldn't say no. We wouldn't want to see this little lady hijacked, now would we? <laughs> well, this is a turn up for the book, I must say. When Sexton Blake calls in the yard to solve a case of attempted robbery. I wouldn't put it quite like that, Inspector. It's information I'm after, that's all. You just want to make use of my long-suffering memory, is that it? It usually is. If you say so. This little lot was used on your bed. The jemmy only, on the window. We picked up the knife in the mules outside. Mm hmm. A picture cutter. No fingerprints. I've already checked. You would, of course. Well, you want to know whether this little lot rings a bell with me? That was the general idea. Mm-hmm. It does, too. A very rusty bell. Fetch me the file on James Fisher. And if records say they haven't heard of him, tell him to dig deep. James Fisher. Better known as Jimmy the Fish. And he's as slippery as his name. I've had him once, and once only, when I was a plain detective constable. And that's going back a few years. It was his first offence, or rather the first time caught, and the only time. But you've kept an eye on him ever since. Ah, yes. A lot of good it's done me. Mark you, I've had my suspicions. Many a job's had his hallmark, but never a shred of evidence. How does he dispose of the stuff? Well, now, that's the whole point. Nine times out of ten, you can pick up these jokers when they try to unload on a, on a fence. But not so this chummy. The only once he did, he was caught. So never again. And you have a theory? My theory, Mr. Blake, is a very simple one. Jimmy the Fish only works on direct commissions. In other words, someone else puts him up to it, he does the job, delivers the goods, gets the money. After that, it's up to those who employ him. Makes very good sense. Well, you tell your friend the commissioner, sir. <laughs> You won't take my word for it. Well, maybe as a return for this favor, I'll help you hook Jimmy the Fish. You'd be my friend for life if you could. Well, now, anything else? Well, where I might find him would help. He has a respectable clock repair business, believe it or not. In the Borough High Street, just over Blackfriars Bridge, near the tram terminal, do you know it? I can find it. Well, thank you, Inspector. I'll leave his little bag of tricks with you, shall I? Yes, but I don't doubt he's got a duplicate sent. <laughs> Inspector Coates. Yes? Uh, just a minute. That's for you. Oh. Thank you. Yes? Tinker. Matt Carnegie. All right, I'll get over there right away. Goodbye. Trouble? For someone, I don't doubt. You'll keep in touch. Oh, but naturally. James Fisher. Jimmy the Fish. I'm going to get you yet. Tinker tells me you discovered something. Yeah, it's too right I have. Take a look-see. Look at the canvas itself and the backing of the picture. What would you say? Well, it's old, very old. And you'd be right, Cobber. 400 years old if it's a day. And uh, that paint there. I confess I don't know. I'm aware that grime can be rubbed in with beeswax to make a thing look older, but beyond that, what? Two, three, four years? Two, three, four weeks, more like. So what have we? Old canvas, new picture. Four hundred years, four weeks. What lies in between? Another picture. Not only another picture, another portrait of a lady. Take a look, there in the corner. I was cleaning a little before doing something about that cut. And, uh, look. Domenico. Son of Chintaro. If 
that is the case, that picture by right should be... Hanging in Fontwell Castle. 